The sun is easy to take for granted. It's above us every day, giving us heat and light, and it's one of the main sources of energy on Earth. Climates form largely due to how the sun affects various parts of the planet. The different ways people interact with the sun and the effects it has on them have shaped all cultures across the world. With that in mind, I'd like to review the sun. Yes, you heard me. The sun has had it too good for too long. All day long, it just sits up there in the sky being bright and hot, and how many of us have taken a critical view of it? How many of us can honestly say we've reviewed the sun? All right, let's start out with the basics. What exactly is the sun? For that, we go to a channel called SciShow Kids with their video, What is the Sun? The sun is shining really brightly out there, but on the bright side- Ugh, who wrote this script? Me? What is the sun, really? Hey, did I hear someone ask a question about the sun? Are we seriously asking a bat about the sun? Everyone knows bats are only alive at nighttime, and nighttime is when the sun is asleep. Yep, the sun is a star. Yeah, I guess the sun is pretty famous. <laughs> if the Earth was the size of the end of this pin, which is pretty small, the sun would be about the size of this basketball. Wait, so uh, does this mean that we can use the Earth to pop the sun? Red dwarf stars are smaller than our sun. In fact, they're some of the smallest stars in space. On our model, they would only be about as big as a postage stamp. The dimensions here are kind of confusing to me. So the tip of the pin is round, okay, but the postage stamp is flat. What am I meant to interpret from this? What, that the sun is round and the earth is round? But fuck it! Red dwarf stars are flat and you can mail stuff with them. Could you imagine being so stupid that you think one celestial body is flat while everything else is round? Then there are super giant stars. Like the name says, those are super giant. They're over a thousand times wider than our sun. In our model, a star like that would be as wide as a skyscraper is tall. What the hell kind of model is this? We're showing different sizes with pins, buildings, and stamps? No, 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 this just won't do. We need to do something about this, all right? The only logical solution is to create round buildings. Think about it. Buildings stay in one place and rarely move. We spend so much time and money on various forms of transportation and get ourselves from one building to another, when we should instead be moving those buildings to ourselves. Imagine how convenient it would be if, instead of going to work or school or, you know, whatever, those places come to you. Plus, you could just look out the window and watch the world go by. Think about how much better life would be. You could just be in your house and roll around like a big hamster ball. It would be so cool, okay? And we haven't done it, and that's bullshit! Anyway, uh... What? the hell are we talking about? Oh, yep, right, right, the sun. It can be used in all kinds of ways. For example, check out this video by Joe My Heck, titled, Solar Death Ray Bursts a Rock and Melts Another. I put two rocks under the solar death ray. Yeah, no, I wasn't kidding. It's a solar death ray. Here it is in slow-mo. <laughs> yeah, check out that burst. Oh my god, I didn't know it was even possible to kill a rock, but this guy just did it. This rock didn't fragment at all like the first one. It just melted, and it was almost 1900 degrees Fahrenheit. So he may have made a death ray, but at least it's solar powered. It's gonna kill you, but it's carbon neutral, so it won't kill the environment. I guess it's true what they say. The sun is a deadly laser. For a more in-depth explanation on how it works, let's check out this other video. This giant lens creates a solar death ray. The fog here demonstrates how it funnels light down to a very tight point. This is a really good visual demonstration of how the light is magnified. I really like that he did it like this. So the next big question is, what would happen if I put a wiener under the solar death ray? Ooh, I wanna know too. When I disengaged the light, it was very clear Whoa. that the wiener was no match for the solar death ray. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, good, 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 good. That's, that's good to know. Um, uh, people? Do not put your wieners in the death ray. Anyway, wow, an entire death ray. The sun has been inspiring people all across time. Let's explore some more historical examples of this. Starting with Polynesian mythology. In the past, the sun would travel through the sky too quickly for people to enjoy the day and they weren't able to get the work done that they needed to do. Enter Maui, one of their great heroes. He saw that his mother was upset by all this, and so he decided to take action into his own hands. So he tied the sun up, which included putting a noose around its neck, then beat the hell out of it, and only after, after he had beaten it, he goes, hey man, you really making my mom upset? Could you like, go slower across the night sky so I don't have to break all 16 of your legs? 
The sources kind of vary on the details there, but that's the general gist of the story, as far as I could tell from my research. But yeah, like, holy shit, dude, don't fuck with Maui. He'll, <laughs> he'll beat the shit out of you and he won't tell you why. In Greek mythology, their god of the sun is Apollo, and he's considered very powerful even among the gods. His weapon of choice is a bow and arrow, but I mean, if you ask me, I think he should have used the solar powered death ray. Apollo is said to have interfered with many events, and that includes directly interfering in battle. I mean, yeah, that's the excuse I would use if I was in ancient Greece. Are you kidding me? You come home having barely survived battle, you've lost your arm and your leg and three of your toes on your other foot, and your your king is all like, hey man, why'd you lose the battle? And you're like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah fucking Apollo is on the enemy team. <laughs> yeah, GG, you can't beat that. I mean, you think that would work in the modern day? You just show up to work late and your boss wants to know why you were late, so you tell him, ah, sorry, Apollo showed up and caused traffic. You know, that problem wouldn't exist if we just rolled work to you. That's why we need spherical buildings, people. Staying with Greek mythology for a second, there's the story of Icarus, who flew too close to the sun, and because of the sun's heat, it melted his clay wings, and he fell to his death and fucking died. Which, you know, is what usually happens when you fall to your death. Maybe it's kind of stupid to critique the Greeks on saying like, Oh, you guys don't know what materials are good for making aerodynamic wings. How stupid of you. But I mean, clay? Come on, dude. You have to know that something that heavy, that dense, would not fly. Even in the modern day, the only thing we use clay for in terms of flying is clay pigeons. And you know what we do with those things? We shoot them down! Alright, they don't deserve to fly. They're made of clay. They should not be in the air. They deserve to die. They are an abomination. And that is why we shoot them for sport. <laughs> hey, man. You remember the, the Egyptian sun god? Ra? <laughs> Dude's a fucking badass, bro. He's got a bird on his head, man. <laughs> Broski, check it out, man. Every night he gets swallowed by the goddess of the sky. You know what her name is, bro? Her name is Nut. Yeah, man. <laughs> he gets swallowed by Nut every night. In the morning, she fucking gives birth to him. Hell yeah, man. You know what would be fucking radical, bro? If they made a Ghostbusters movie where they fought the Egyptian gods. The only problem is, bro, they got a bust a nut. <laughs> Talk about surfs up, man. Anyway, you'd think we'd have figured out the sun by now. I mean, we've been looking at it and observing it for longer than humanity's even been around. But check this out. This is the song called Why Does the Sun Shine by They Might Be Giants. It was released in 1994. So that right there really is the thesis of the song's message. Not only is it the first thing that they say, but it's also the chorus, so like, you know, it really hammers in the point of what the sun is. By the way, the melody of the song is just so good. The music video is amazing too. The visuals are so imaginative, but they still very clearly convey information they want to say. It's simple enough for a kid to understand while visually clever enough to appeal to an older audience. Really good work here. Keep that in mind. Remember they said that that's going to be important later. The sun is large. The sun is far away. It's about 93 million miles away. This is the key aspects of the sun pretty concisely. I mean, as far as a basic understanding about what the sun is, it's hot, it's bright, it's big, and it's far away. That, yeah, that covers the bases. Overall, I love this song, but what if I told you that there was more to the situation? That's right, there's a sequel song, released in 2009. This is Why Does the Sun Really Shine? Again, by They Might Be Giants. The sun is a miasma of incandescent plasma. Okay, yeah, so it's been updated. That's probably for the best. Scientific facts change all the time as we gain a better understanding of the world we live in. The sun's not simply made out of gas. All right. 
This single line does a very good job of concisely addressing the fact that this song was made to correct the previous song, as well as clear up some misconceptions people have had about what the sun really is. I forget what you've been told in the past. Okay, this was just a couple lines after that last one I highlighted. It's it's redundant at this point. Yeah, 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 we get it, we get it. It's not a gas. The sun is a miasma of incandescent plasma. I forget what I was told by myself. Holy shit! Plasma. Forget that song. Plasma. They got it wrong. Yeah, I get it. Are you are you gonna add anything else? Okay, no, no, you're not. Great. Awesome. Thanks for that. Although this may be a more up-to-date understanding of what the sun is, I certainly prefer the first song over the second. For one thing, the first song is simply catchier and more fun to listen to, but beyond that, the second song simply can't stand on its own. It only exists as a refutation of the first song. If you'd never heard the first one, the second song would be nonsensical to you. You'd wonder what the hell Gas did to the singer to elicit such a violent, vitriolic reaction. All this talk about states of matter may be a little confusing for those who aren't familiar with the subject, so let's quickly go over a video on the topic. I'll just choose one at random out of all the videos ever made about states of matter. Oh, here we go. Top four states of matter by... Oh, hey, that's me. I made this. First of all, I want to get this disclaimer out of the way. The only states of matter worth mentioning are solids, liquids, gases, and plasma. Anything else is dumb and doesn't make it into the top four. In fact, they don't even get into honorable mentions. It's not even close. With that out of the way, let's dive right into the list. Can you believe those were the first words I ever said on this channel? It's really been a long journey. Starting out this list at number four is liquid. Oh my god, brutal! I'm glad I'm not a liquid right now. Coming in at number three on the list is gas. Now, gas is normally a pretty boring state of matter. Yeah, and worse than that, it's not even what the sun is made of. Hey, uh, they might be giants. That's how you say that one time. Coming in at the number two spot on the list is plasma. Now, I missed the day of class where we discussed what plasma was, so I'm not really sure what it is. And plasma still made the list at the number two spot? Are you kidding me? Finally, coming in at the number one spot on this list is solids. Hey, 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 now that's a good choice right there. I'd say that's a pretty solid way to end off the list. While we're here, let's take a look at some of the comments made on my channel in its infancy. I can only be jealous that I didn't think of that first. Hark, if you hate your censorship. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? <sighs> solid. Close, there are only four states that matter. Zero out of ten didn't tell me to smash that like button like it's my flashlight and hit the bell icon like my dad hit me when I was little. Edit, just kidding, my dad left when I was three. Edit two, OMG, thanks for the like and heart. All right, cool, we're moving on to the next part. We're done reading comments now. You know, I feel like we almost have enough information to really review the sun, but let's just try and keep learning. Here's a video called How to Draw the Sun by Ed Atlin. Oh, uh, hey, this, this is how you draw the, the sun. Uh, I have, I've spent many, many hours uh, over the last few weeks staring directly at the sun. People say you shouldn't stare at the sun because it'll cause eye damage. Ed Atlin has bravely put his body on the line for this tutorial. He's a true hero. Some of you wise viewers are questioning why why use this color. I thought the sun was yellow. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is generally shown to be yellow in most of its depictions. Well, you know, upon first glance to the untrained eyeball, it appears to be a more yellowish hue. But if you stare at the sun long enough, you'll see its true color. That it's just big and black. Huh, I mean, I guess I haven't stared at the sun long enough to see nothing but blackness. You might have thought I would start with the sun balls, but the sun is is not actually a ball. That's another common misconstruction. Oh, oh, is, is he? Does he know? Have the true secrets of the multiverse been revealed to him? Perhaps he truly has studied the sun long enough to know the truth. The sun is actually, in fact, not a ball. It is a giant sun tunnel, also known 
as a son of. He does know. Okay, everyone, pay attention. This is important. And well, I, I, I have myself traveled through the tunnel. I flew through it all the way to the other side. And what I witnessed upon my exit from the tunnel has been burned into my very brain. Ed Atlan must have somehow gone back in time, or perhaps he's describing an event that took place decades ago. I've explained before how there used to be a massive multiverse at the center of which is Earth. The inner realm, which is, say, this one, was made using elements from other outer realms, and one of the furthest was the Sea of Infinite Stars. Outer space was modeled after that one. The people who lived there were known as the Sun People, born of the intense heat and energy of the stars in the sky. Unfortunately, as with every other realm beyond the shell of the Out, the Crusher of Reality has destroyed it along with every living being within. But we're not, we're not really getting into that right now. Okay, let's focus back on the video. And that, that is how you draw the sun. When, when you run out of ink, you will know when you are finished. Wow. I wish more drawings would just tell you when they're done. It's always so easy in really any kind of art to add one more detail, or like in my case, to add like one more segment into a video. But this is efficient. Maybe one day we can all be like a drawing of the sun. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna go stare in the fucking sun. What a beautiful drawing and an excellent tutorial. I'm astonished to know there's another multiversal traveler out there making YouTube videos. I guess there are more of us than I realized. Anyway, we've done a lot of research into the sun, the way it affects the earth, the people on it, their culture, and more. Overall, I'd rate the sun one out of one star because it, <laughs> it's one star. It's, it's a literal star. Anyway, if you like the video, I appreciate every thumbs up, every comment that I get. It really helps out a lot. I've got a Discord server and a couple other links in the description, so check those out if you want to. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Alright, bye. New message received from the Sun Warrior. Well, howdy there, work. I know you ain't know me, but, uh, heard plenty about you, and I was another person here, but uh, I'm gonna have to kill you. See, uh, see, cause I have a bounty on your head, and if I kill you, I get to join them. Sorry, just business. But I'll be seeing you real soon.